Hey guys, this is Drew Craig with GearWire.com, and I'm here with another home studio workshop. We are joined here with uh, Ableton Live, one of my favorite programs to work with, and the Mackie Control. Um, basically, we're going to show you how this MIDI controller interfaces with the program, and also just a brief walkthrough of uh, Live if you have not used it. I definitely recommend it if you're into looping, sequencing. Uh, makes the program Acid look like child's play. I mean, it's just really a lot of fun. And the way, it's, the way it's set up, I just really enjoy working with it, even on a, a live scale, like uh, performing out live with Ableton Live. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. So let me just walk you through. The first thing you ought to know about it are these two buttons up here in the upper right-hand corner will get you in between the mixing view and the sequencer view, which is a common format for re recording programs. Um, as you can see, all of our samples are in here under the sequencer view. And as we pan over to the mixer view, I can click on any channel. And down here, my effects plugins will be featured. Or if it's a MIDI channel, uh, let's see, like this one, my soft synthesizer will be featured that I'm using, my VST soft synth. And if you're not familiar with those, um, boy, you got a lot to learn because there's some great stuff out there. So anyway, this is a track that I've been working on called Just Jack. It's kind of a house, live house track. And um, we're going to just walk through mixing through it real quick using the Mackie controls. So the first thing on the transport, I'm going to just hit play. Here the tracks start up. Now remember, using the bank and channel options, we can actually pan through, so to speak, all the different tracks that are available to us and adjust their volumes accordingly. Now one thing that I haven't mentioned yet about the control is right up here in this assignment box is Basically, you can these knobs up here are assignable to various different features. Like right now, um, you can you can have them on pan, where obviously it'll just change the pan from left to right, and you can see in the display as I turn it, it changes. You know, if I want that on the right or the left, you can uh, adjust that accordingly. You can also set it to EQ, dynamics, plugins, sends. That's really nice. If I want to send the signal to another effects or an external effects, so I could use that. Um, so it's just a really versatile unit. So let me hit play. We're going to do a little bit of mixing and have a little bit of fun. So anytime I'm mixing, I like to start with the rhythm section. I like to start with drums, bass, and then add in the airy elements after that. So first thing I'm going to do, you're going to watch me isolate the bass and the drums. So I'm looking for drum kit, percussion, and upright bass. So let's see if I can find that. Here's the drums. Here's the bass. So I'm just going, th I'm going through each channel and soloing it to see what's on it. I think we got it. Drums and bass. Here's the percussion. So I start with getting a nice solid mix between those three and finding them on here on the Mackie control can be a chore, but they're all labeled four, five, six, four, five, six. You just get used to it after a certain period of time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute those three tracks, and now I'm going to try and target the airy elements. So I'm looking for synthesizers and stuff of that nature. So they appear to be right here on these two tracks. And now I'm going to try and mix all three of those together. You probably heard earlier there was a lead vocal that had been chopped up with a lot of delay. That's right here on channel uh, 10, which on the program. It's right here. And then 11 is the keys. That's probably one of the last things I'd mix in.
there you go. Decent mix. That's generally the approach I'd use, and uh, doing that all with a mouse can be quite frustrating. It's hard to have really a lot of accuracy when you're pointing and clicking, especially when you have a wireless mouse. They, they kind of, when they get low on batteries, they stop working very well. And, um, so I definitely prefer using the Mac control for that. And it's really well set up. A lot of shortcuts, you know, it's got your undo and all that stuff that you need that you normally do on your keypad. So it just uh, tries to get the keyboard and the mouse out of the way and the mixers and the faders in front of you. So it does a great job, but I uh, definitely recommend it. Check it out, there's a new model out. This is last year's model. I'm sure the new model is very similar. And they also have extended extenders, which would be like another eight channels that you buy and go right here. Or they also have an extender that has a bunch of these knobs. I'm really interested in getting one of those and really freaking out with it. But uh, take a look, it's a lot of fun. It definitely helps you get the most out of your software. If you've already spent, you know, 400 bucks or 500 bucks on Ableton Live, you know, this is, I think retail, these are about 700 bucks or something, but it really allows you to get the most out of your equipment and your programs. So check it out. Thanks for watching.